13th disappearance of Shanann Watts and her two daughters seemed routine enough as far as these type of things go in the beginning, but then the missing person's case became a murder investigation. A bit. Tonight, police issued a missing endangered alert for Shannon Watts and her two daughters. Her husband says she's been missing since Monday morning. And a lot of you have been very active on Facebook tonight, reposting family pictures and hope that someone out there saw something. Denver 7's Thomas Hoppo live in Frederick tonight at the last place Shannon Watts was seen. Well, this is the home of the Watts where she was last seen by her husband at about five in the morning on Monday. Now, they had canine units here surveying the area and trying to get any scent of the woman or her daughters. But we spoke with the husband, Christopher, who says no one has heard from her. They're doing their best right now to figure out, like, if they can get a scent, see where they went. They need to unfold. We reached out to both the Colorado Bureau of Investigations and the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Both agencies have provided us with an immense amount of support and staff that is needed to handle a case of this magnitude. There's a lot of stake here, and we are exploring all avenues in order to not rule anything out. I also want to take this time to assure everyone that there is no reason to believe that the public is at risk, and we will continue to update everyone as things unfold. Hi, everyone. I'm Alan Janay in the CBS4 Newsroom. We are watching breaking news this hour on CBSDenver.com. And Christopher Watts, booked into the Weld County Jail this morning, now facing charges for the deaths of his wife and two children. Authorities are saying very little about his arrest on suspicion of three counts of murder and worked for. Prosecutors believe she and her two girls were killed inside their home, but the details as to how and why are sealed in court documents. front door. Ashley Bell was the last person to see Shan Ann alive. Because they didn't deserve any of this. He was arrested and when the body of Shan Ann was recovered, can you give us some detail on the timeline? I, I don't want to, I don't want to test anything that I'm not either certain about myself or that would jeopardize the case in the matter. Uh, the victim's family on social media said that he confessed to the murders. Can you confirm that? Uh, again, that would be a detail that I would not be able to disclose at this time. Can you talk personally about the toll this case has taken on the town of Frederick, on your officers, on oh, the team? Absolutely. I, that is a question I can't answer. And it's been, it's been earth shattering. And it doesn't, it's just earth shattering. I don't feel like this has real taken right an now. earth, this has taken an earth shattering toll. He has not been formally charged. Chris Watts will be back in court on Tuesday, and prosecutors have until Monday to bring charges against him. Shanann's family in North Carolina is running the gamut of emotions. They're confused and they're angry over this tragedy. Police are not commenting on reports that Chris confessed to killing his wife and two daughters, but he is expected to be formally charged on Monday. Well, police are being tight-lipped exactly where they are, but they we do know that they were at uh, a, a oil patch that Chris used to work at. Now, as far as exact details of the case, we're not getting much of that, and that's because there's an affidavit that has been sealed. I was in court yesterday, and the judge wanted to keep it sealed until possibly Monday. We also filed this afternoon a motion to unseal the affidavit um, in support of warrantless arrest. That was granted by Judge Kopkow this afternoon. That warrantless arrest affidavit will be available this afternoon at the conclusion of this press conference. 
and you think this is the most impossible outcome that it could possibly be. Friends just want to know why. It's just horrible. On that. Yes, okay. I think, I know why he lied to me. He lied to me because if I'd have known that he had a child on the way, I'd have never wasted my time with him in the first place. Like, none of this would ever even occur if he would have just told me the truth. So do you think if he found out that you, um, if... Let's say this week you guys were to go look at some apartments, and this is hypothetical, but you, um, you've you never found out that his wife was pregnant. Would, would that have changed anything, uh, like you just said? If I knew he was his wife was pregnant, I wouldn't be in this picture. So if his wife was not pregnant, um, and forgive me, but if, if, if he takes her out of the picture, you're never going to know. That she was pregnant, right? What do you mean, takes her out of the picture? Like, if, if he murdered her, she's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to. I got divorced from my wife. You what? said, do you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone, but this don't lead hypothetically, please. Don't hypothetically, lead on. if she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If right, you didn't you're, know, you're leading into right. questions that. Or but nothing with your... If you didn't know, though... Wait, Nick. That she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not... I'm following you. I just want her to answer a question that relates to... She said something that's important. That if he didn't have a child on the way... She, or if he didn't... If she didn't know that, she would have continued the relationship, right? say they have found two bodies they believe are the daughters of Christopher and Shanann Watts. It's reportedly confessed Thursday to killing his pregnant wife and two daughters. Watts appeared in court hours after police found his wife's body at an oil field where he works. Police said the other two bodies were found nearby. In a filing last week, Watts' defense team asked that the coroner do DNA swabs on the children's necks, raising questions whether they may be looking for evidence of the mother's DNA there. We all thought we had heard the worst of it, but new details are emerging late today about the defense of Chris Watts. And Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen has been combing through court documents. And ja Jacqueline, the, the defense now wants to use a discredited DNA expert to examine these girls' bodies? That's right. You know, when these court documents came out today, the expert's name looked all too familiar to us. We did a series of stories on him two years ago. Here's what we found. As public defenders comb the Watts family home today, they also filed these court documents indicating Chris Watts' two daughters were strangled, their bodies found in an oil well filled with crude oil, the public defenders requesting DNA evidence from the necks of the children and the hands and nails of the mother. And what caught our attention, they named this man, Richard Eichlenboom, as their DNA expert. It depends, of course, if the tape was on the body. Known for testifying at high-profile trials, here the Casey Anthony case. But two years ago, in a Denver courtroom, a judge ruled Eichlin Boom unqualified to testify as an expert witness after he admitted no direct DNA extraction or analysis experience. We took one look at the work that he claimed he'd done, and it meant absolutely nothing. It was not scientifically based. While Eichlin Boom and his wife defended themselves to Denver 7 then... It's just untrue. The thing is... What they do, they play a game where they try to discredit you. They would not comment on this case. But former DA Mitch Morrissey weighed in, saying, I would be shocked if the defense tried to use him in front of a jury after he has been discredited as an expert witness. What's clear is that even though sources tell Denver 7 Chris Watts gave a confession that led to the bodies, he does plan to mount a defense and a tragedy that will continue to play out in court. And the judge did deny the defense request, saying he's not going to tell the coroner how to do the investigation. Legal experts tell me this defense request is boilerplate so they can file appeals later and say mistakes were made.
prosecutors, and they're also responding to the defense's claims that too much information was leaked to media outlets. Denver 7's Tom Musson's here. Uh, you've been going through these files all night. And Shannon Jack, a lot of new information tonight, so let's break it down for you tonight. Today, prosecutors filed a motion requesting fingerprints, cheek swabs, and hand pictures from Chris Watts. They believe Watts is responsible for all three deaths. You remember the defense claimed that Watts killed his wife, Shannon, after watching her strangle their daughters, Bella and Celeste. Also today, prosecutors responded after attorneys for Chris Watts accused them of leaking information about the case to the public. And Tom, it does. Now, we first learned this from a well-placed source early in the day, but in calling several other sources close to the investigation, nobody wanted to touch this. Our second source came in with, within just the last hour. Here's what we've confirmed. The two young girls' bodies, three-year-old Cece and four-year-old Bella, were found inside an oil and gas tank owned by Anna Darko. That's where the husband worked up until recently. Now, sources tell us that the oil tanks were mostly full and say the motive was likely twofold, hide the bodies and disguise the scent. But who is sounding off? The victim's brother. He said in a social media post, I just want 30 seconds alone with this heartless psychopath and went on to say, may Satan have mercy on his soul. Dad was visibly upset from the moment that Christopher Watts walked into the courtroom. Frank's son was also there with him, who was consoling his dad during some of those more difficult moments. At times, you know, you could really feel the tension between the two men and Watts. A notable example of that would be when everyone was filing out of the courtroom. Frank and his son, they stopped and they stared down Watts on their way out. But Watts, on the other hand, he appeared stoic throughout the morning hearing as this hearing as he listened to the judge list off his charges. For an emotional vigil to remember a mother and two young girls in Frederick, Colorado. The vigil was just days after Christopher Watts reportedly confessed to killing his wife. It's expected he'll be charged next week. Shanann Watts, who was 15 weeks pregnant, and their two young daughters, Bella and Celeste. And further complicating this case is the lack of a motive right now. According to family friends, everything seemed normal. The story has shaken the country, the world, and even our own backyard here in Colorado. And there are still so many unanswered questions. When you see the family pictures of them all together smiling, really looking like sort of a perfect family. It seemed happy. And I really think that he was struggling with her really bad. And not only that, he's got a third child on the way. And I know he was probably just like, I can't fucking afford a third kid. Wants it, but can't afford it, you know? And he always told me he, like, wanted a little boy. You know, he wanted a third child. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it was just something like, I think they were in a financial situation. And I think she was very non-responsive to him trying to to like solve problems and like get out of the situations that they were in. And I think people just get complacent is what it is. And then, you know, I think uh, he met me and I think I was like a breath of fresh air for him where it was like he could get away and just be like, you know what, I can be myself. I don't have to worry about money right now. Like, you know, and this girl, like I have my shit together. Like my life is so like very in order. You seem very uh, organized and independent and Always. Like I do really 30. good. I do really good at work. I have like almost a perfect credit score. I've been saving money for a house. Like I don't mess around. I mean, I did. I screwed up. This is like my one screw up ever, and it's about to be on like national news. But um, just very dialed in, and I think it was like a breath of fresh air for him to like be around something like that because I don't think that he knew that that was like a real thing. And he had told me that like numerous times. So, like I didn't know like women like you like existed. I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. He met me, and I think I was like a breath of fresh air for him.